Uh, thank you, everyone, for staying around. I appreciate that. And so as you, as you wait patiently for your beer, um, it's my goal to give you an update about our company, the company that was created by the same people who brought you Bro and who bring you um, Bro continually um, uh, every day. And, and I'm, I'm going to give you a nice incentive to, play, to pay close attention because there's going to be an actual robot that plays a role in this. If we can iron out the technical difficulties that plays a role in this presentation, and there'll be an opportunity for you to rent, win this robot or one just like it uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, I've been involved, and I'll tell you a little bit myself in a couple slides, but I've been involved in tracking the Bro Project for about 15 years, and I think the past year has been one of the most uplifting of those 15. So many amazing developments have occurred technologically. There's the SMB analyzer, but institutionally, the conservancy, the donation from the Mozilla Foundation. But I wanted to highlight what, for me, is something that wasn't mentioned yet today, but for me is probably the most gratifying moment of the year in Bro history. Um, a lot of you are from um, companies here, and that's actually a bit new. I've seen a lot of badges from .com. In the past, we've had more participants from .edu, .gov. And so I'm not sure if everyone understands that the National Science Foundation has been a steadfast and consistent supporter of Bro for many years now. Both the research, um, primary computer science research that's gone into um, adding features to Bro, um, but also into sort of more operational projects like the current Bro Center of, of uh, Expertise. And um, every year, all big federal agencies prepare a massive document where they explain to Congress uh, what budget they'd like to have for next year. And NSF did this in February, like every other agency, and it was, you know, three or 500 page documents. And if you're in .gov, you know how important these documents are. And every agency also um, itemizes its accomplishments for the last year. So NSF did that in February, and of the 20 or so accomplishments that it chose to, um, it chose to highlight for the year, number one out of the 20 for this $8 billion organization was investment in Bro, which is just kind of staggering to me. They called it um, supercomputing cybersecurity, and the text here is a little, a little funny, but that's okay. I'm not sure any of the program managers actually wrote that. Maybe some of the federal relations people did. But it, it's amazing. And, and they highlight it as number two, uh, investment in the search for gravity waves. So you know, for me, that prioritization is, is such a testament to the NSF's pride um, and its confidence in the Bro project. Um, and it's belief that Bro has and is having a really important um, effect, maybe one of the most important tech transfer stories really coming out of .gov in a long time. I thought I'd highlight that since it hasn't been said. Um, now, the, the main point of this talk is an update. And for those of you, there's a lot of new people, but for those of you who are not new who know us in the company, you know us as Broala. Um, and that name is um, actually going away. I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you what our new name will be in a little while. Um, I, I also want to say this is not really a product talk, even though this is a sponsored talk. It's really a talk about our values and our goals. Um, you can talk to us about our products. We have quite an exciting pipeline. We have an exciting product right now outside um, at our booth, but I'm not going to be talking much about products. Um, I do want to introduce you, for those who don't know, to the, to the people in the company, the founders and some of the core people in the, in the company. And um, one of our co-founders is here, Vern Paxson, the creator of Bro. Um, he is an eminent computer scientist at UC Berkeley. Um, he, in 1995, I think, wrote the first line of code uh, for what became Bro. Um, he's actually written fascinating papers on a variety of topics. Most recently, he's been thinking a lot and writing about criminality, about censorship, and its evasion um, uh, in repressive political regimes. So he has a very wide-ranging interest. He's on a plane right now to come here. He wanted to be here for this talk. But um, he's teaching a graduate course at UC Berkeley. And the session on network intrusion detection was today. And he just felt like he had to teach that, that particular unit. The only other person he said who could have taught it was Robin. And Robin's sitting right here. So Robin, who co-authored many of those great papers by Vern, is our CTO. Um, he has been the, I think his first commit to the Bro Project was 2001. He's also the open source lead for the Bro Project. Seth really, really needs no introduction. Um, we call him our chief evangelist. Um, if you saw his talk earlier about the Bro Package Manager today, you understand why that title is perfectly appropriate. He is Bro's biggest fan. He's written, he's contributed foundational, you know, um, features to, to the Bro Project that are in use at many of your organizations and written tens of thousands of lines of Bro code. Um, 
So who am I? This is my personal sort of NASCAR um, decal slide. I spent the last 15 years at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. When I left, I was a division director for scientific networking and also director of this funny thing that DOE calls a national user facility, the um, mission network, the high-speed scientific network interconnecting the US national lab system with also some sister networks in um, Europe and around the world. Uh, and I've also served on the board of Scenic, which is the public network in California that interconnects uh, 20 million Californias. And um, before that, before grad school at UC Berkeley brought me to San Francisco, I worked for Amnesty International. And I just mentioned that because a lot of this talk will be about values, about where we, what we believe as a company, um, and our primary goal to make the internet safer. And because it strangely and unexpectedly sort of dovetails with Vern's current work, so I've been reading a lot of his papers recently. You should too, I think. Um, I'm not going to introduce everyone in the company, but here are some more people. Um, and I will just highlight some people known, well known to the Bro community. Johanna, um, who knows more about SSL than anyone else in the world, as far as I'm aware, um, who you know, thinks about encryption, APIs, net control, um, has spoken at many BroCons, the only staff member actually gifted with the power of flight. Um, Vince Stouffer, who's spoken at BroCon before, spoke last year, uh, built the 100 gig Bro cluster at LBNL. Our, our platform team, which is remarkable, um, Sean Rowland, Jonathan and Mark, who are newer to the organization, they all come from a high-performance computing background. And I want to specifically say that Jonathan and Mark have been working on MPI code, code for parallel processing of computation, computationally difficult uh, but scalable problems. And that code's running here at TAC. So that was kind of cool, I thought. Um, some of our collaborations and contributions uh, coming out of this team. Of course, a lot of these are, we're not so, solely responsible for. Bro is a community project, um, but, but we've played central roles in these accomplishments. And I have to point out, a lot of people respect Vern for creating Bro, but some subset of people think it's more awesome that he created Flex, um, <laughs> which, <laughs> which a good friend of mine emphatically describes as alien technology. Um, so this is kind of the core point of this talk. Um, we're creators of Bro, and, and we understand that we have a special obligation towards this community, towards you and the audience um, and other, other people who make use of Bro on a daily basis to explain our values, our goals, and our intentions. And, it, and certainly if I were in the audience and I was running or working for a company that was commercializing Bro, or I was responsible for a large footprint, um, a Bro deployment, or just I found Bro to be useful in my day-to-day -day work, I'd be quite interested in what the, the creators of and, and sort of core technologists behind the project um, want to do with their company. So I'm, I'm just here to explain that as clearly as I can. Um, and I want to start with values. Uh, where do we come from? So last year at BroCon, uh, Vern sort of gave the definitive intellectual history of Bro. There was a keynote, and he told um, the 20-year history of Bro. It's about an hour talk. There's some really great questions at the end, and I would encourage you to watch it. If you're new to Bro, and there's a lot of people, I think, who are new to Bro in the audience, watch the talk. You'll understand a lot about its origin. I, I would like to back up even further um, and say something about the cultural context that gave birth to Bro, because it's not just about Vern writing that code in 1995, it's also about what organization Vern worked for and what kind of environment that created. Um, and Vern was working at the time for Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. It's not like the NSF, which I mentioned before, which funds small scientific teams, generally PIs and a few people. DOE funds very large team science um, that, that often involves global collaboration. So these teams might be 10 or 50 or 1,000 or 2,000 people. And the lifetime of the experience, experiments might be 30 years. Um, and so this is an example of one DOE collaboration, also NSF, the Atlas detector um, at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. It gathered evidence um, for the existence of the Higgs boson, which led to a Nobel Prize recently. This is sort of the culture bro came from, big team science. Um, large scale instruments, billion dollar scale instruments, uh, massive data sets that need to be shared and combined and processed around the world. If a, if a $10 billion uh, instrument requires 30 nation states to invest in, no one nation is going to own the data. It's going to be shared and moved around the world. So therefore, a requirement for very fast networks as well, computational science, HPC, um, and global collaboration. And, and the networking element should not be underestimated. It's not just because I came out of a networking silo. This, this data, I think, is really interesting. This is the data. Um, showing uh, petabytes of scientific data sets moved each month ac across the Department of Energy's mission network since the early 1990s. This is the same data 
log scale, linear scale. Um, and this is roughly a 60% annualized growth rate, which is twice the growth rate of the commercial internet right now. Um, and it has led this network to constantly be at the bleeding edge of, of networking technology to deploy the world's first 100 gig network at continental scale and just deployed a 400 gig connection in production. So 100 gig is the slow lane. And so Bro grew up in that environment where it wasn't possible to be a blocking technology. Um, that's, you know, you, you can't imagine a, a network analysis platform sitting in, in line with all these uh, massive flows, especially because TCP is so, you know, exquisitely sensitive to packet loss. Um, and a further wrinkle in Bro's history is that the Department of Energy has these sort of unexpected national security missions. I mean, the DOE looks after the nuclear weapons complex of the U.S. because politically that's always been kept out of the DOD, and that's, that's sort of unusual. Um, I, I, when I dug up this photo that I had taken at LBNL with Cliff Stoll and some of his colleagues um, memorializing the fact that they found this famous Hanover hacker at this site at LBNL, I noticed that it was almost exactly 30 years ago. And that's not the first computer hack ever detected, but it may be the first described in great detail, turned into a book, and it became a bestseller. And if you haven't read that, Cuckoo's Egg, you should read it. Um, so this important national security dimension is part of Bro's history as well. So the environment Bro came out of, the threat model is complex, right? Very complex. It involves APT. Normal traffic is almost, it's fruitless to try to define what normal traffic is. Um, new protocols, techniques, and architectures are routinely born. It's people's job to create new protocols, techniques, and architectures. The mission requires bleeding edge performance, and there's no clear boundary between inside and outside because these collaborations involve people moving around the world constantly. Um, so we, the people in the company, I think without exception right now, are a product of this environment. We came from mission organizations, .gov, like me for 15 years, .edu, .org. Um, we really do tr truly value excellence, honesty, generosity, service, and we'll try to show how later on in this presentation. Bro is in the DNA of the organization, and, and the people in the company are dedicated uh, deeply to making Bro better and to continuing continuing its um, pattern of thriving. Uh, our goals as a company really are, as I said before, to make the world's network safer. We think the internet is amazing. We don't want to see it balkanized or censored or rendered useless in some way. Um, we want to make it safer, more productive, more enjoyable. We want to build a great and thriving company um, by creating superb products. Uh, we're intense. We're sort of perfectionists in some dimensions, and we love the idea of that challenge. And we want to contribute material and intellectual support to Bro. And it's, you know, that seems like a sort of an ordinary thing for a company to say. Um, so um, we want to try to demonstrate that very concretely. So I'd like to announce today um, our down payment on the material support. You heard about the Software Freedom Conservancy, or just the Conservancy this morning. Um, we are now announcing a donation of $100,000 to the Software Freedom Conservancy. We are thrilled and honored to be making this donation. Um, we are a bootstrapping startup. We have to earn every dollar um, that we spend, and we could spend this $100,000 in various ways, but we choose to spend it this way. Um, and <laughs> Thank, thanks. Um, so this is, you know, it's a sign of the seriousness of our commitment. We want, there'll be future donations. We want them to be larger. And we also invite you to join us in making donations. You know, we heard this morning from Karen, you can join the Conservancy. You can give $10. You can give $10,000. Um, we'd love DOE to give $10 million. <laughs> NSF has given a lot lately. We'd like DOE to maybe step up a little bit more. Every donation is appreciated. Um, and you can contribute in other ways, too. You can contribute code. You can, you can be creative in the way you donate. And I would, I would ask you to to talk to Adam, he might be a good person who can help you channel your, your generous impulses and help suggest how you could help. But I know you can help, and we really would like to see other companies step up. Um, you know, you don't have to because of the way Bro is licensed, but we think you ought to. Um, so as a company, uh, here are the things that we will do. We uh, will act in the best interest of the Bro project. We'll contribute money, time, engineering cycles. I'd love to stand here a year from now, two years from now, and say we have one, two, five, ten engineers just working on um, features in Bro for the open source project. You know, not even working on, on stuff necessarily that we would um, 
pull into our commercial products. Um, we will continue to push the boundaries of Bro and return improvements to the open source project. Um, we will build and sustain the community by, by feeding it with content, you know, podcasts, blogs, videos. Uh, there could be a lot more of that, actually, especially, I mean, uh, the, the, the Bro project has done a great job of making Bro a little bit easier to, a community that's easier to enter into, but I think it could be much better. We'll try to help with that. And we will, of course, continue to define the cutting edge in network monitoring and security. There's such an academic heritage in the company, so many PhDs and postdocs, the, and, and the close affiliation with the International Computer Science Institute in Berkeley. This is who we are, and we'll continue to be that. And these are our simple rules of engagement. We will not fork bro. Um, we will follow what I call Robin's rule. I've, I've expressed it here a little bit. Um, uh, awkwardly. But basically, if we as a company develop features um, that we could either keep internally or we could open source, and those features probably would have been taken on by the NSF-funded effort, which is, which is an, another way of saying they're probably generally useful to the U.S. university community, then we will open source those. Um, we're, you know, we will also keep some technology um, private, and th that'll be more about extreme scale enterprise features. But we all came from universities or national labs, and we do not want to debilitate Bro for those, for those organizations that gave so much to uh, its heritage. Um, and I would say, you know, uh, I almost hesitate to give an example, but I will say, because it is an interesting example, Last year at BroCon, Seth spoke up and, and in response to a question about when there would be an SMB analyzer, and he said it's really, really hard. Um, don't really see it happening anytime soon. The protocol isn't well defined. It's very complex. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of problems. And then sort of miraculously, it's sort of a complicated story, but this summer he retreated into a cave or his basement or something, and out came a really interesting and I think will be profoundly useful SMB analyzer. Now, a different company might have said, Last year, there's a commercial opportunity. We could take Bro and we could create a version that had an SMB analyzer, and we'll just pay Seth to do that with company dollars. We had the cash to do that at that point. But not only did we not do that, we didn't think or talk about doing it because it so fundamentally would go against our values. So th that's just an example of what we won't do. What we won't do is important, just like what we will do. Um, so now to the question of our name. Um, we have, as a company, a new business model. We're really focused on products now and not services. We had a kind of bootstrapping revenue um, stream for services, but we're, we're moving a bit beyond that. We're growing staff. Um, the new products in the pipeline are quite exciting. Great new customers, a lot of momentum. And we thought it was time to have a new identity um, and a more fitting identity. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, when we talk to folks about the name Broala maybe over the last few months, I would get a range of reactions from negative to sort of lukewarm. Now that it's leaked out a little bit that we're changing it, there's a lot of fondness for the old identity. <laughs> I think, and that's OK. Everyone loves that koala bear. But, and it, it, is a, it was a good name, and it was serviceable for us at the time. And it encoded our, our attachment or our connection with Bro. But it was also kind of hard to say and spell, and it was hard to explain how it embodied our values. And so um, we began a transition to find a new identity. And that began with a series of um, interviews. We engaged a branding firm to help us. And some of you, a bunch of our customers were interviewed. And if you were interviewed, I really want to thank you. And I'm going to show some quotes from the interviews. But I want you to know these were all anonymized. We have no idea what you said about us. Um, and we, we only just saw some high-level sort of qualitative summary and, and quotes. Um, but I think they're pretty interesting. Um, th this first reflection is on the cybersecurity industry. I can't think of a brand in this space that I like, which is pretty sad. Um, and th this industry is all about fear. Um, and at the end, what does Brawala even mean? But, but I really want to focus on this point. Because for me, coming into the cybersecurity industry, going to RSA, from the background of networking and, and discovery science, it does seem really weird, um, really strange. Um, uh, and here's maybe a slightly unkind characterization, but I really have been um, a little freaked out by it. It just seems like it's full of macho posturing and militarism that's unnecessary and a lot of fear baiting. And all these appeals to authority, specious appeals to authority, it's not scientific at all. And it, if it doesn't feel weird to you, it's probably because you've just gotten used to it. I think it ought to feel kind of gross. And it feels gross because, in my view, it's basically authoritarian. 
you know, basically the voice of, of and I'm talking about large industry incumbents for the most part, and this is a generalization. There's a range of companies doing cybersecurity in a much different way with a different tone. But the basic appeal is, you know, be very, very afraid. Be very afraid. Um, don't worry, I've got something great that can help you. Um, you don't need to know very much about it. You don't need to know evidence or data about how it's going to work. And, and that's just awful. And it's condescending. And for those of us who've had responsibilities for outcomes in big organizations, it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it doesn't cut it. So as a company, we want to stand a world apart from that. We really want to create a different tone, and that's an important part of our branding. We illuminate. That's one of the things we seek to do. We make unknowns known. Um, we try to make the complex tractable. So Bro isn't always the easiest thing to get up and running. It's not the easiest thing to deploy. With our first version of the appliance, we just wanted to make it simple. Deploy in 10 minutes, very high performance, obsessive focus on correctness and performance. Um, we want to help you build your cybersecurity solution, whatever it is, on a foundation of data. We want to help by giving you data, which then you can do. It becomes a component in your own data analytics pipeline. Um, but, um, but, you know, we supply data and metadata. And we strive to be highly symbiotic with the, symbiotic with the Bro project. So um, we are core light. Um, <laughs> so we want this name to resonate in lots of ways. Core Bro team, um, core of the network, core of your business, the light of illumination. Um, and we also come bearing some core light swag. So we've got... Uh, <laughs> this will be available tomorrow. This is why today the Bruala pins. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is this? <laughs> I said there would be a robot. Okay. So, Mark, in addition to helping write MPI code that's running in this tack, also is our robot wrangler. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is it going to keep moving or can I pick it up? <laughs> no, I think I'll pick it up and I'll show it. <laughs> you don't need to know, but you should be afraid. <laughs> so we, oh, this is so cool. Okay, so we have four of these. We'll, we'll keep one of them for our platform team because I think it's clear we need an integration with the bro box in this thing. But we'll give, we'll give four away. We have a raffle tomorrow uh, and Thursday too. So if you would just fill out, we, we want more than your name. We want a little information about how you think we can be better as a company, how you think bro can be better. So there's, there's a little bit of stuff to fill out, but it's not too burdensome. And we have four of these. I have heard that they are actually beloved by children and also by adults too, but by children. And I think they are waterproof, like you can um, write software for them and put them in the bath. So they're pretty cool. This, it's vibrating in an unsettling way, so I'm just going to give it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and some of you may prefer flashlights. That's fine, too. We, we've got these cool aluminum LED flashlights with our logo. I think we've got enough for almost everyone. And if, if you don't get one, we'll send you one. Um, I want to say the company is, is really thriving now. We've de-risked it very significantly in the last year. It's a blast to work for. We're bootstrapping, like I said. We're proud of that. Um, we're now challenged by growth. It's a good problem to have. Our customers now include about 10% of the Fortune 50, with more soon. And I, so we're focused on the problems they have, problems of scale, at least for now. And I, and I think that has been a little disappointing to some universities or smaller organizations, people we know and love. Um, and I've just had to explain to a number of them, we can't build a bootstrapping revenue stream um, from your, your business quite yet. We'll get there, but we can't do it now. And we need to focus where we have an undeniable advantage, which is sort of definitive knowledge of bro and um, problems of scale. We can really make a difference there, and that's where we're focusing our effort. Um, we're also we're adding, I said this wouldn't be a product, product talk, but we are adding new capabilities to our first product, Robox One, pretty rapidly. We've had a lot of software released in the last 10 months, so we are moving rapidly. And we've got a pipeline of products, both physical, faster, slower, maybe, maybe slower, um, maybe maybe um, optimized for certain environments like industrial control systems um, and virtual. So why choose us? There are, there are um, other, you can do lots of things. You can build your own bro boxes or you can choose others. I will say customers appreciate our, our team's definitive knowledge of bro. Customers appreciate our team's definitive knowledge of bro. That should possibly, that might have been our name. <laughs> it's a little long. But that at root of it is why people are choosing us. Our products come from the same people who, you know, conceive and implement the, the features, commit changes, resolve issues, solve hard problems of performance and functionality. 
Um, and we can do a lot of things um, with confidence, tuned for stability and performance. So um, we think that's something of um, a special advantage we have. Um, and so we want to make use of it. I want to say a few words about a couple of notable collaborations I'm very excited about. If you don't know about Tanium, you should Google Tanium today or tomorrow and learn about it. It's a company that gives visibility into endpoints, hundreds of thousands of them, um, very rapidly. They've got great presence in the Global 2000. They're a hot company. Um, and we, like I think our colleagues at Tanium, see a lot of potential in the integration of data from the networks um, and from endpoints. So each perspective complements the other. Sometimes um, the combination of those data streams can be very powerful. And we also have found in Tanium really natural partners. Um, you know, the technologies are similar in some respects, especially the separation of data and policy that's at the root of the architecture of both technologies that's so powerful. Um, and we're geographically, we're near each other. We can drive and visit each other. That's helpful. And culturally, we seem very similar. And there's some nice folks from Tanium. Um, they're, they're wearing Tanium red shirts, and I think that may be one of them right there. Um, so they want to talk to you about what you would want from such a collaboration because we are validating um, these integrations now. We want them to create value for you. And we can imagine t really some, some wonderful possibilities, but we'd like to get prioritization from you. And another collaboration I want to mention, this is only the second, and I'll stop with collaborations, is with Corsa Technology, another remarkable company you should, you should learn about. Um, Corsa makes networking equipment that is extremely flexible. It's real SDN, um, but it's also very high performance. Um, we've ever, you know, my first job at LBNL was integrating um, the Bro system there, one of my first major meaty tasks. Um, with uh, the first, I think, 410 E1200 deployed in North America. And so I've always thought that Bro should speak um, to network components um, a lot more often than it does. That architecture is used in the university community and national labs, not so much in the commercial community. I still think there is great potential for creative coupling of network components and monitoring solutions based on Bro. Net control, which um, Johanna has spoken about in several recent presentations, is the mechanism for that or the successor to net control. Um, and in some ways, this is not just a sort of collaboration around products. There's actually an NSF-funded research project um, that will allow us to explore these architectures with Corsa. If you have insight about how this integration could work well in your environment, we'd like to know. We think there's lots of good cybersecurity applications. And I'm almost done. I want to say we're seeking great team members right now. We're growing. Um, it, it's such an honor and a joy to work with these people. They're, they're, they're wonderful. Um, and we're looking to grow the team mindfully. We won't grow precipitously. Um, and and um, you know, we know that you can kill a good thing just by pouring people into a team. And one thing I learned at LBNL is you don't, it doesn't take very many people to change the world, right? A team of four or five or 10 can definitely make a massive impact. Um, so if you're, at the, if you're really at the top of your game technically, if you're also just a great collaborator, a kind of a virtuoso, you're flexible in your thinking, you, you want the best ideas to win out, not necessarily your ideas. Um, if you are attracted to the values that I described, if you want to make the internet safer, and if you're inspired by the idea of tackling challenges with these people, with, uh, then I would ask that you send a note to jobs at corelight.io. That's our new um, URL. There may or may not be content there, but we're, <laughs> at the moment, we're working on it. By tomorrow, they will be. Um, so, so please be thinking about that. Um, and even just initial forays and discussions, I'd like to do this. Do you see a role for me, potentially, in six months or a year? Where would I need to live? That sort of thing. We'd love to talk about that. Um, parting words. So the future of Bro has really never been brighter. I said the... the package manager, the SMB analyzer, net control, the conservancy, rising, rising, rising adoption. I mean, that's what so many new faces here represent. It's remarkable. And, it, and you can see it has a kind of snowball effect. I predict we're going to be challenged with Brocon next year and finding a venue that will hold everyone. And you know, we're going to run up against the challenge of whether to monotrack it or multi-track it. Um, Corelight will be here to support the Bro project and to help illuminate your network. So remember to enter our raffle. We'll have the forms out tomorrow. And, and you know, I don't, I don't really think I want to take questions now. Just catch me afterwards or chat with me as we go to the social. I will just say let the social begin. Thanks. Thanks.